Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So we are now. And actually, I need to switch for this dungeon. Actually, I need to switch back to the Deku Shield. We are going for the third spiritual stone. It's actually trying to avoid that. We are inside the great Lord Jabu Jabu. And I will admit this is probably the second most frustrating <laughs> level in the whole game. And it's not even because it's particularly difficult, it's literally just because it's I don't know, it's not it's just not my favorite level, I guess. And then we have this character. If you remember we met her father this is princess ruto she left the note saying she had been swallowed by jabu jabu and she is a spoiled brat she claims she doesn't know anything about the letter in a bottle which is interesting who could have left it i wonder So the simplest part here is actually just to go ahead and drop down here. And we're going to talk to her. <clears throat> so now we need to keep talking to her until she makes us carry her which is actually wow extremely annoying because you have to pick her up set her down um, we if you get hit you drop her like that um, she does become useful and you'll see what I mean here in just a minute we throw her up there I step on this and we swim. And we're gonna pick her up and we're gonna continue on. is here we're actually waiting for that to go back up this takes us back to a room we were just in actually we're gonna go back to the room we first met her in which is here we're actually gonna go to the other side and if you see the green pulsating thing over here, we need to make a note of where that is because we're going to need it later. Try to avoid the giant jellyfish. We're going to go through here. We're also going to avoid these guys for the moment. Hang a left. Now, our special weapon here, and if I step off of this, it's going to open back up. So all these blue switches that you're going to see, I have to set her down on as the counterweight so that I can go into the room. And our special weapon in this dungeon is the boomerang. Which I don't actually think this is going to affect too much here. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what I gotta do. It's been so long. Like I said, this is my least favorite of the levels. We're 
go back up. Let's see, let's pick her back up. And we're gonna go this way. And is it straight ahead? Nope, not there. Is it over here? There we go, this is where I need to be. I went to the wrong room first. Here we go, this is the room I need. I gotta get these guys to pop up. Boomerang is one of the most classic of Zelda weapons, um, I think, and it, it won't, I mean, it goes all the way back to the first, very first game, um, and it's really the most effective overall weapon we get in this dungeon for everything. Now, we're going to go back to that room we were just in. We're going to just run past them. Run past this guy. Go back here. <coughs> and... Set her down. Now. Come on. Yeah, the whole point of Z-targeting is to be able to target what you're aiming for. It's almost like a uv like a uvula, you know, in the back of your throat kind of a thing. Or a tumor, you know. What do you want to call it? It's a growth. Now, each time we get rid of one of those, it's going to open up another area that was previously blocked off to us. And we pick her up. And this was previously blocked off. Yep, see, the red slimy thing is gone. Now in here, we have 40 seconds to pop all the bubbles, which is more than enough time. That's gone. We go back this way. And you see that one's still there. So we're going to go back down this way. And it should have freed up, yeah, freed up this one. We're going to go in here. And we're going to cut 
this one down. Problem solved. Now we should be able to go back into that middle room. Right. Go past this guy. Go back in here. And now we can go in here. Now this room's a little more challenging just because we have the uh, jellyfish, but we can take them out pretty quickly. And if we stay out of any close proximity to that, um, he's not really going to be able to hit us. That's done. So now, that one that I told you to keep an eye on in that other room where we first met Princess Rudo, that one should be gone now. And that's the one we're going to drop down. And the first time you play this one, it comes across very much like a maze, but it should be this one. And you can only get to this spot by doing what I just did. Otherwise, there's no other way to get here. And we're actually... This has a mini-boss, which the other levels didn't really have like a designated mini-boss, and this one does. Um, this mini-boss is challenging, too. You'll see what I mean. I may actually die doing this. We'll see. And of course, that would have been all too easy. Now, we are going to face a gigantic Octorok, which is another one of those old school Zelda creatures. All right. And he's hard because you have to stun him. Ugh. And that was the mini boss. Now, that went way smoother than I was actually anticipating it going. Um, he can be particularly challenging. Um, oh. Missed that fairy. I was going to catch that fairy, but that's okay. So, um, <clears throat> sometimes when you hit him with the. At least, if memory serves. If you hit him with the boomerang when he's chasing at you, he spins around in a circle, and sometimes he keeps chasing at you. In those instances, when he did it, he turned around and got into a position where I could hit him. And this, we're actually going to stun. Oh, missed that jump. So the boomerang is a great offensive weapon, but they left in 
basically what the boomerang was originally used for, which was to stun enemies. Ugh. Okay. We're going to take this guy out, because otherwise he's going to be a problem. here, and this is going to lower down. Now we're back in this room again. This is our third time in this room now. But that's okay. We need one of these boxes, because over here is a switch that we need the extra weight to hold down. And we couldn't get to this room, really, until we did all of that. So, this level is very much kind of your first real maze that you have to deal with. The others have been fairly straightforward. Um, I just remember more or less where to go with, you know, few exceptions. Oh. Gold Sculpture. We'll get them while we're here. Now here, I have to hit that switch, like that. And now we head to the boss. And just for posterity, we're going to save. This has actually turned out to be one of the faster levels, surprisingly. Now, I do think this is a pretty cool concept for a boss. Um, it's different, you know? The jellyfish are a part of him. So the first thing we need to do is basically disconnect him from the body. He is going to do that. Get some good hits in. We're going to attempt to throw our boomerang in there. There's our window. Oh, come on. Now we just move. There it is. We have completed our third dungeon. This nice, gross, exploding tumor 
bio hazard thing. Get our heart piece. And here we are. And now she's going to yell at us. <laughs> what took you so long? Now suddenly she's like really nice towards you because I think she did actually was able to actually admit the danger she was danger she was in. Um. I think of the three stones, this one visually is one of my favorite um, stones. It's really, really pretty. Um, the Goron's Ruby is too. The Kokiri Emerald I could take or leave, even though I love the color green. It's something about just the way it was designed. I like the design of the Goron's Ruby and the Zora Sapphire better. Alright. done everything here that we're going to do. And only really one place left to go, and that's back to um, Hyrule Castle Town. I love the look they gave to the Zoras. Um, I think they just, it was a great design choice um, to make them like mermaids, but I mean more fish based, if that makes sense. Uh, it might not. Uh, you'll see there's another uh, heart piece over there, which we couldn't get until now. Nope. Until now. Until right now. There we go. And that completed our heart container. So now we have enough. And we're honestly just going to ride this pretty much the whole way out. It's a shame I can't <laughs> can't do anything with those rupees. Okay. Time and the drawbridge is up. Yeah, don't feel like dealing with you. This is bizarre.
Now, if you've been with us since the beginning, this will probably look familiar to you, as we saw it at the very, very, very beginning of the game. Pretty horse. And that is a seriously talented throw. Man, look at those ears. You gotta admire Link here. You know, especially after everything he's just been through. You know, he's willing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a guy on a horse ten times his size. Low blink. Very dramatic. Okay. Right. And we're going to go down and get this little gem. The Ocarina of Time. Oh, more cutscene time. Can you hear me? Is this thing on? Testing. One, two. This is really a tragic scene because it's, you know, this loss of innocence. You know, she was this princess in a castle, and now she's being forced to flee from a terrible man. And she has to rely on you to continue on what you both started. It's really quite tragic. We're going to make it daytime so that we can go into the town. Oh, went fast enough. That's okay. As far as everyone knows, everything is normal. And this is the Temple of Time. This is everything we've been working for. For the last 
three hours or so. Something I've always admired about Zelda games, and maybe what draws me to them is the amount of effort they've always put into world building and their environments and everything. And uh, this is actually where I'm going to end this episode. We'll pick up uh, going forward. We'll see what wonders await us inside the Temple of Time. Uh, see you guys next episode. Thanks.